Before we start writing code and getting our editor all set up, I want to start with a quick discussion around terminology. So if you're brand new to JavaScript, one of the first things that might confuse you along the way are some of the terms I have on the left side of this slide. JavaScript, ECMAScript, ES 2015, 16, 17, 18, ES 5, ES 6. What do all those mean? Are they all just JavaScript? Let's talk about it. So JavaScript, like most programming languages, continues to grow, new features are added, but the way that that happens is pretty different than most consumer software or operating systems. If you think of something like Windows or iTunes, when there's a new version or new features are added, you go and download that release, everyone has that release or everyone who downloads it, and you get those new features. It's a sort of a bundled package thing. You go and download it and you've got it. JavaScript is a little different. There actually isn't a single JavaScript. There isn't a one JavaScript download link that you go to, like there might be for Windows or for iTunes. Instead, JavaScript is implemented by all the different browsers out there. And it's up to those browsers to implement new features. So the way that it all works is that there's an organization called ECMA, E-C-M-A. They have uh, sort of a bleak website. And ECMA is an international group that is in charge of all sorts of different standards, not just for programming. They come up with standards for things like acoustics and electromagnetic compatibility and electromagnetic fields, information storage, uh, near field communications. And then there's this one right here, ECMAScript. So ECMAScript is a specification for a programming language. You can think of it as almost like a, a reference. It's a text document that says, here is a specification for a programming language. It should behave this way. It should have this feature. This thing should work like this thing. <laughs> I don't know, that's a horrible explanation. It's essentially a document that describes how a language should work, but it is not itself a language you can go download and use. It's only a description. And this is it right here. There's a website you can go to to view it. This is the specification for a language called ECMAScript, named after the organization ECMA. And if you just take a look at really any piece of it, you won't see much code at all. It's mainly text explaining how different pieces should work, how things are related, what keywords need to exist in the language. So it's a set of rules. Then it's up to the browsers like Safari or Chrome or Internet Explorer to go and follow those rules and implement them as JavaScript. It gets kind of technical here. There's a committee called TC39 at this ECMA organization. They're the ones who are in charge of evolving and maintaining this massive document that describes how ECMAScript should work. And every year, different delegates on this committee meet up, they listen to presentations, they debate to figure out which new features should be added to this specification. So when something is added to JavaScript, what really happens is that it is added to this specification as a piece of text, usually a lot of text, explaining how the new feature should work. Then what happens is that browsers have to go and implement those changes. Now, as far as the naming here, this can be a little confusing to beginners. The way that updates, quote unquote, or new features used to work with ECMAScript was not on an annual basis. There were batches of updates or batches of new features that were added to the spec, and they had names like ES5. There was actually no ES4, it was canceled, uh, but there were these, these groups of new features that were added, and it took forever like a bunch of years in between these updates to the spec. And after ES6 was released, which took about six years, the committee decided to change things up and just annually update the spec. So naming started to go by ES for ECMAScript. And then instead of a version number like four five or six, it's now a year. So ES2015, ES2016, ES2017. So all of these terms over here on the left are referring to, well, except for JavaScript, they're all referring to this specification document. ES6 is the same as ES2015, and it all boils down to this one document that we saw and text being added in to describe how a feature should work. So what's, what's kind of annoying about all of this, to be honest, is that since there's no official download or an easy way just to get JavaScript as a language and, and update it automatically, because it's all implemented by separate browsers, 
This means that different browsers will support different features at any given point in time. And there are websites that exist specifically to help you understand this. One is called caniuse.com. And if we search for some feature on here, which if you're brand new to JavaScript, it doesn't really matter what I type in here, but I'm gonna look for something called arrow functions. And here we have a compatibility chart telling me which browsers support arrow functions and when they started, if they started. Arrow functions are a newer feature in the spec. They're not supported by Internet Explorer at all. They were added to Firefox and Chrome a couple of years ago. So a chart like this helps you understand that not every feature is going to be available in every browser. And that all boils down to the nature of JavaScript. It is not one language necessarily. It's a bunch of implementations of the same specification. Oh, what a way to lead the course off. I know it's not, it's not the most exciting topic, but I have to get this out of the way because a lot of what we're going to talk about in this course are newer features, things that are exciting and worth knowing about. But I'll say things like, this feature is not supported in Internet Explorer, and I want you to understand why that is. Why do some browsers have certain features and others don't? Okay, enough of that. Let's get started with setting up our environment and then dive into code.